Well, today's the day. AMD is launching the 6800 and the 6800 XT. These new GPUs, PCI Express 4, performance through the roof. It's incredible. PCI Express reset 100%. Out of the box, it's great. My day is perfect and my excitement immeasurable. So in case you hadn't heard, AMD is launching three new GPUs. Two of them launched today. The other one comes a little later in December and it's a little higher end. The, C the GPUs that are launching today is the RX 6800 XT and the RX 6800. The 6800 XT has 72 compute units, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. It has a game clock of 2.015 gigahertz and up to 2250 boost clock. 256 bit memory bus interface and 128 megs of cache. Yes, GPUs have cache now, just like CPUs. And that's how AMD has been able to do a lot of the magic here. The 6800 performance for Linux and everything that I was able to th throw at it, even VFIO type performance, this is a Windows virtual machine running under Linux that can knock 4K performance absolutely out of the park. This system is a, a, a Threadripper, a 3970X with the Gigabyte Designator TRX40. I've got Thunderbolt, I've got two GPUs in there. My primary GPU is Navi, uh, Navi 10, so it's an RX 5700, a Phantom Gaming version of that. I've also tested the Tai Chi. I haven't had a ton of time to test a bunch of different platforms, but I know PCIe Reset works correctly on this platform because of my work with Thunderbolt. I mean, at the end of the day, pretty much all roads lead to PCI Express. And to be sure, the problems that we experienced with Vega and first gen Navi were bugs in the implementation around PCI Express Reset. Well, AMD has been paying attention. They've done their homework and this system is working perfectly, absolutely correctly, as far as I can tell, for resets and everything else. So anybody that's super into VFIO, the 6800 or the 6800 XT, that's your card. It's great. And the 6800 is a two slot card. The 6800 XT is a two and a half slot card. So I can pack in four cards on this platform. That's only a matter of time before we see Linus, you know, you know, seven gamers, one PC AMD edition, because why wouldn't you? I mean, it's just, it's utterly bananas how much platform bandwidth you have. And Threadripper, although we've got Zen 3 Threadripper probably about six months away, give or take, I'd say. And uh, that's gonna be a game changer all over again. I mean, this is already a game changer. It's just completely nuts. Uh, bonus though, if you have Navi 10, a 5700, or Vega, or Polaris, there is actually a fix now, a proper fix, that doesn't involve kernel hackery. And that's available in the Level 1 forum, thanks to Level 1 forum user Belfry Possum and GNIF of the Looking Glass fame. Looking Glass is what's running behind me. I'm doing a single uh, frame buffer copy from our, you know, 100 plus FPS Doom Eternal to our Linux host system here, running Ubuntu 20.04. And that's the other place that I'll give AMD a lot of kudos for. There's no mention of it in their press release, but they have day one Linux drivers for Ubuntu 20.04. That means you can install Ubuntu 20.04, install Steam right through the GUI, be set up and running in Steam with the RX 6800. And the performance is not quite at the same level of performance you get natively on the Windows platform, but it is far and away, it just blows the doors off of anything that I've ever experienced in terms of uh, how good the experience is on Linux, AMD has absolutely completely nailed it just for the PCIe reset issue and other quality of life improvements. This has been the best GPU on Linux that I have used since the Matrox Millennium 2. Like those are the days when you had hardware 2D acceleration and it was really incredible. You know, in some scenarios we don't have hardware 2D acceleration anymore on X. It's just that the hardware is so fast you can just, I mean, we barely have a working compositor at this point. I mean, Wayland is supposed to fix all that. So it's actually kind of a lot of headache for companies you know, to really properly support things because there's no infrastructure. It's like, hey, we showed up to build this building and there's supposed to be a concrete foundation and there's actually a cobblestone foundation on one side, sand over here, a mud trap. Oh, are those crocodiles? That's kind of the, the situation that we're in between Xorg and Wayland at this point. So it's really, really incredible. Now I get that a lot of people are not super into VFIO, running a Windows virtual machine for all your gaming needs. So let's take a look at native performance benchmarks.
So as you can see, even for native performance, this GPU blows the doors off of all previous AMD GPU G GPUs. If having a relatively open GPU is important to you for the Linux platform, it doesn't get any better than this. Just AMD's attempted stewardship here, I think is worth the $600 price of admission if you can afford it and if you're looking for the top tier graphics performance. Otherwise, you're gonna be waiting for other products to come out in this stack that also hopefully have reset and other stuff like that fixed. That said, I think it's really good to encourage, uh, you know, to show some, I don't know how we show AMD appreciation as a community that they have done the work and put it in here. I think a lot of naysayers and detractors will immediately pop up and be like, okay, well, all that's done, but then this other thing isn't done. And it's like, well, but a lot of progress has been made and we can appreciate that. And as long as we have forward process, we never actually stagnate then that's good enough for me because we as the community can come together and carry it the rest of the way. And that's exactly what happened with the, uh, the, the hardware bugs around first gen Navi. So the earlier cards, like if you have an RX 5700 or 5500 or you know, a Vega based card, like a Radeon 7 or uh, you know, a Vega 64 or one of those, if you were trying to use it in this capacity where you're doing PCI Express pass-through, running a Windows virtual machine with real physical access to a GPU, uh, when the card would hang or crash, it was over, it was just done. This, this is working perfectly. I've done intentional crashes, I've injected errors, <laughs> errors into the platform basically, and the card has been able to recover every single time. It is the most stable experience that I've ever had on Linux since, uh, probably Polaris, like the 400 series Polaris cards. Uh, it is rock solid. It is genuinely very impressive and I really, really appreciate that AMD has done that. And of course the native performance, that's just you know icing on the cake for me, but it's also far and away better than RX 5700 performance, far and away better than, than anything else. You can do for reasonable 4K gaming on Linux at this point with the games that are available to run natively on Linux. And AMD has provided a full driver package that's not just drivers, but also Mesa, about 60 devs in all for everything that you need to be up and running on Ubuntu 20.04. Now other distros need some love too, but hey, we're gonna carry it the rest of the way. Navi reset, thanks to Belfry Possum and GNIF uh, in the level one forums. You can carry, you know, you can get GPU reset. So we as a community come together and we do what we can to carry it over the finish line, provided we've got documentation or just at least a little bit of surreptitious help from AMD to help us dot the I's and cross the T's and make sure that everything actually works. So in short, Linux and open GPUs are important to you. This is the GPU family that you want to buy. This is the GPU that you want to buy, even if you don't really need it, as long as you can afford it. You know, don't buy something you can't afford, obviously. Uh, just to be able to support the ecosystem and the project because it's that good. It's incredible. I, it's rare for me to issue that kind of a recommendation, but I've had such an amazing time testing this with a full VFO setup. Another feature of this card that I forgot to mention is it has a USB type C port. The USB type C port is uh, for VR headsets, stuff like that. But for VFIO users, you can pass through that USB controller. <laughs> With this Threadripper system and the RX 6800, it's like, witness the power of the fully operational Threadripper. Because everything is PCI Express 4 and all that memory bandwidth and 32 and 64 cores. I mean, it's just, AMD has outdone themselves. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Show me pictures of what you build or describe your system or hey, at least come get those reset patches if you need them. You don't have to do kernel hackery or anything else like that. Use this PCIe quirks. Those work great. There's gonna be a full video on that soon. It's gonna be its own thing. Um, but yeah, this is great. This is the absolute ideal situation for Linux. It really could not be any better than this. AMD is on an incredible tra trajectory for their open source support. I really can't say enough nice things about it because you know, goodness gracious. Yes, there are some things that need to be addressed, but by and large, this is the, like I say, this is the most incredible GPU launch for Linux in a decade, hands down, easily. And the 68, I mean, the performance is just one part of the story, but every part of the story is as insane as the performance. So anyway, I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums, post pictures of your builds, you know, show that you're in line. There's probably gonna be shortages. These are probably gonna sell out really quickly. Hopefully AMD can address that a little better, but uh, yeah, let's take a look. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you later.